Okay, you guys. Did the crickets meet up with the with the groundhog? What? What's up with this? Uh, I figured I'd uh, let Puxitani Phil let you know that RealLibertyMedia.com had its yearly server bills come up and all its other stuff we used to provide for you. And last Friday, I found out after Puxitani Phil said so, we didn't have enough people to come to donate. I thought that would be enough. So I don't know, maybe you crickets and you Mr. Phil over there. You guys are all getting together and it's not going to work out. We need to support the voices of the people that are bringing the information to help you all out, whether or not you agree with it, whether or not you can do anything with it, whether or not you choose to. Now listen to Freakers Ball. found out we're a little bit short on the donations for this year. We do this once a year. Make the request. It goes about a month, I guess. Just a few of our pro- our broadcasts mention it. I mentioned it once. Maybe I should have mentioned it last week. Really would appreciate anybody dropping whatever they can. If uh, all the people that listen to me on all the places that we go out, whether that's uh, BitChute, Minds.com, and thank you all, everyone over there. If I had in uh, Cowboy Tech, I, I think I might have missed your donation of points of quite a few weeks ago. I've been here 2017. Thank you very much for all your bonuses. I just haven't had a chance to get over and do much on those sites besides post. Uh, your normalization of ignorance, your YouTube uh, remirroring. Thank you very much for all that that going on. All that is out there. If we could just get a, even a dollar, go to reallibertymedia.com and get a dollar from everybody that listens, the server bills get paid. And it happens once. Now I'm understanding. Rob works saying the groundhogs ate the crickets. Well, wow. What are we going to do with that? No, we don't have a way to come back. We'll have to wait for the, uh, well, never mind. So I'm at, we've got to ask one more time at least. Uh, Grimner came out of his pocket this this time, just like Bo did. He did on freedomsnetwork.com. I never really found out whether what happened to that. Did enough money go there to keep those servers going? And it's just a few people supporting this. Uh, I would like to think that we can support ourselves and we don't have to rely on so many people. In fact, uh, Grimner is the, not only putting it coming out of his pocket, he's doing all the work to keep it up, keep all that going. And offers me a place to be that makes it nice and simple for me to show up every Sunday uh, and, and do this. And then we get, that gets that, that gets that ever important bro, uh, file, the podcast, you want to call it pod, uh, broadcast, the broadcaster I use, the, the file for this. And that gets out to everyone else. And then we have other people that come in and help. And it's all volunteer. I don't ask a I don't have I don't ask a dime for this. I mean, it's not that we can't use it uh, behind a woodshed, but it's not the point. And again, so for all whatever grief I might get about what I know it doesn't work or whatever the heck you think that I'm doing because you don't really understand what I'm doing and what I'm talking about. Uh, that's okay. I, I know. I know beyond that, and I know that those of you that uh, have heard and do as I've explained and suggested, you you go a lot farther quicker, don't you? And I'm not asking you in particular that have taken benefit. I'm asking anybody who understands that this uh, this broadcast goes out because there's other people that are sacrificing themselves as well. Uh, I really believe that I don't think it, a buck a buck is too much to ask if we go down to a buck. And I certainly thank all those that generously already, without more, was just reminded or even originated their donations. And so this is, I guess, behind the woodshed. I'm giving you some lashings on that. I, I thought really that this we would just wrap that up pretty quick. I also know the reality. So if you, those that you can, don't feel guilty if you can't. I mean, I'm I'd be the one that couldn't actually. So I throw in uh, my part here, I suppose. And so we all do. I'm hoping we're all doing what we can without too much uh, impetus. And I don't know all the ways you can get to donate. I know that there's some easy ways on the website, reallibertymedia.com. Just go there. And this would go for any of your networks. Just to uh, figure out a way to get get uh, donations sent. Uh, there's uh, all kinds of different different uh, virtual currencies. Uh, you know, we got. Uh, I kind of tagged on to the Doge of War, the Doge coin. It's not doing much in the in the cryptocurrency thing uh, world, uh, but it's still there. And it's my little tongue-in-cheek joke about that, but it's still a virtual currency way, if you have those, to transfer some value to Grimner, who's all into that and may be able to do those exchanges. But you have the direct donations as well. 
uh, we can, well, however you guys do, I'll do that. I, I don't do any of that, so I don't have any bank accounts in that. So that's, uh, I learned about stepping back a little too soon, maybe, <laughs> before all this stuff. I realized I wasn't so smart as to see the future of how that would work when you're outside that system, when you some of it needs to be inside in order to make it all work for you. So I, I'm a little bit uh, handicapped in that regard, but a lot of you are not. This is why I keep telling you about, oh, watch out, watch out of this electronic world that they're, they've got us plugged into, that you plug it, they got you plugging yourself into. At any rate, with the, with the double-edged sword that it is, we grab the handle. To do that, it's going to cost a few dollars. Please donate what you can. I really was kind of surprised. I didn't, you know, I kind of go on. Like I've been told at the district, ideas that I come up with that we need to do in the, in the, in the law side of all this, uh, and I was making comment about, well, I'm not so sure about the cost of this and, how that would work, and it was a unanimous, don't worry about the money. That's what we're talking about here. Uh, I don't have, and I I literally took took the wise counsel, backed off of whatever it cost, and I'd, whatever ideas I have to come up with, I would come up with, and uh, the assembly would make the decision on whether they wanted to move forward, and the money was really kind of an irrelevant point. It's just the means to the end. So we have a few bucks. If I remember hearing right, it's about $150 left that Grimner came out of his pocket on top of all the work he does. If we can get a few of you all, wherever you hear this broadcast, just to find reallibertymedia.com and uh, drop a drop a buck. Even those uh, FRNs work. And like I said, I don't get too freaked out about all that stuff. You just have to know where, you just need to know where to place all that. So involve yourself where you can, but don't don't handicap yourself and your mind about getting into all that. As I said, if you are one with the, the things the government issued, you might actually be in a more protected spot than I find myself now, and I've had to do other things to adjust. And that's driven me to do other and more, I guess, more fantastical things in most people's minds. They don't understand how I'm going about what I'm saying. They don't. People don't really truly understand what I'm saying. They think they know, and they don't. And it's not a. It's just what the fact is. I ran across three or four evidence again. It's uh, these last few weeks. Maybe it's me shifting, and I didn't notice a shift in me, but now I'm real. I'm just seeing more and more people who don't understand. They think they got it. They think they're being told right stuff, and they and they don't really understand a thing that's going on, and that's a serious problem. And they don't understand uh, the the terrain that they're in. As I keep talking about, I, I'm so fortified. Every time I, that happens, to show you, I reanalyze. Every time I get a, a, an obstruction of somebody uh, ha- getting in their own way. I rethink about what I've been doing, and I can't tell you there's not a, I can't think of anything I'm, I would change at this point uh, over all this time. And anyway, uh, going back to the donations, thank you for those that have. Please consider a lot. Uh, we don't, I don't beg about it. I'm going to, this is about as close as I'm going to get to begging you for helping Grimner uh, keep the servers up and all the services you don't know about behind the scenes and that go on to keep this thing going. Uh, and uh, uh, if you can, again, I'm, I'd be on the wrong side of that uh, one myself. So thank you very, very much. Anyway, thank you for listening and, pass again, passing the, the broadcast out. I can't thank you enough to get the word out. I don't know what people are going to do with it. I can't know if people are going to – well, it seems to resonate with quite a few people. It just uh, doesn't move past that in a lot of places, but that's okay. I realize that's just going to take a matter of time and reorientation. You have to re- I'm telling you, folks, you have to reorient out of what you even thought you knew. All the perspectives I've seen people gain is really an incorrect approach. And I just, I wish I could tell you about what I have to deal with during the week, not have to deal with. I choose uh, certain cases to help people try to understand what their problem is and to go through that, to un, to deprogram what they thought they knew. And again, it's not my opinion in deprogram, deprogramming someone and what they think that they're doing. I, I can tell you right where you need to go in order you can see yourself how it's not going the way you think it was, and you better be careful about trying to push your will on something you have no power to change. And so there's a different a different thought process that, that goes on and on. As I said, well, as I get through this, I'm going to try and show you something that it actually occurred to, to me again. It kind of proves out some of the stuff that we're up against. Uh, and you understand your government comes at you in the three branches of government they talk to you about. Those, that's the way they come at you. There's coming at you at least three directions. And so it, that's the society you live in, and everyone wants to deny that. You're just, I think you're being a fool, and I guess I have to say I think you're being a fool because that just, uh, that's the way I'm thinking about it. But I think generally you would find that if you understood what the condition was, you, you would consider yourself the fool. 
to, to continue or not, actually continue and not doing it right or to not do anything and not do anything right. It still ends up being the same end for all of us. So a BTW, a broadcaster reference, BTW RLM 254, I believe. And uh, we can we can move on. Thank you again for the donations. Anybody else can please uh, drop a, I want to say a dime, but it's kind of, remember, it's been, the FRN's been devalued, so you've got to multiply that by, by, by 10, remember. So drop a buck. I did say buck, remember? So we don't care how it works as long as it's still spendable. That's the big, big, open, the open, uh, the, the open uh, joke. Your, your, what you use to, to get through the world in this world is whatever people will accept. And that's the interesting joke about the cryptocurrency. It'll survive, but it'll survive only because it moved and evolved to go into a place where it actually could be defended by people who understood how to do that. And I'm hoping that those people will listen to what I'm saying because that's, I'm giving you the, the clues in other places on how you'll do that. And I reference those periodically. Um, again, this uh, script can't. There's no script here that I can be written that can't be defeated. If I, I was asked before, I was trying to figure out who was asking me right now. But somebody asked me, it was like someone writing a book, and can you tell me this? Well, if we did that, if I pulled that together and I, I put it out there, and we, we would agree that we could move this thing through. As soon as the other side that's af, that wants to oppose you sees that game plan, they can defeat it. They actually can't defeat it, but what they can do is they can throw a bunch of dust in your face and dust in the face of the thing that, they're, that you're trying to use as a, as a mechanism. And so part of this is a real problem with communicating information. If I make a plan for you, anybody who sees that, will underst- who is in the system, will understand how to get in your way. Make it a delay, if nothing else. And that delay can last longer than you. And so, I, uh, as I tell you, I hate to just even discuss the things that's going on because I don't want to circumvent someone else's authority, uh, you know, again, surprise, a counterattack, and, a su- and surprise and a counterattack is, is is really part of the key here, coming in ways they haven't even thought about that sit right there to come that no one understands is a tool to do so in the system. Again, I'm talking, we wouldn't even be talking if there weren't people in the world who want to put the, some kind of authorita on their shoulder, on their chest, as a medallion in their pocket, as some light, uh, license they don't show you, uh, some hat they wear that has some authorita to come and harm you. If those people didn't exist, I wouldn't probably be here to talk to you. And you wouldn't maybe be listening. We'd be off doing what we want to do. We'd be living in the peace that was promised within the context of our property that uh, the those that are out in the system anymore want to destroy in you. And if they're going to destroy the property that you can tangibly touch with your property, uh, then you don't have a property that you can protect. And I guess I, I, that thought crossed my mind as I was coming into the broadcast. For all everybody that's out there that listens to me, that doesn't start to assert them things, find that wrong you want to make right and make it something that you understand is really about you, protecting you ultimately, understanding the property that you is. Uh, you are just barking up a tree. You're just making a making a noise you're not capable you, you don't and if you're not capable of protecting yourself you're not capable of you have no standing to whine and i would say stop it stop wasting everybody's time you want to talk about crickets we'd have a desolate sound in place real quick if actually people was everyone was honest about that and you'd have to listen to that silence in yourself about well yeah i can't protect myself i can pretend i can protect myself i can uh, say that the one attacking me is is a criminal but when Genghis Khan and his horde attacks you, when they come and swat you, you better have some understanding of certain things. Look very carefully. There's anomalies. Not everyone dies. Not everyone gets taken down. Maybe they're not all of a sudden not there when it's time when they could see something happening. I'm showing you how to do the records and make the records you need as they come beforehand so that there's no... Uh, that there is a conscience that works in people. They're always looking. These people look for an immunity they can hide behind. I tell you, learn to take that away from them ahead of time and do it responsibly and do it uh, nobly, whether they re- respond to that or not. But anyway, we today we have uh, some. So thank you very much, all your all the support this these weeks and on going on, uh, whether it's uh, for the broadcast or the network uh, or the uh, places like ucy.tv. Uh, where we do the uh, simulcasts and th- all that play, all that stuff. 
but today I wanted to lead off with some di real dangerous things. I used to do the recalls, and I told you a long time ago, they became so many that I could do a broadcast on recalls, and that wasn't what I was there to do, and I re deferred you over to other places that would give you recalls, but there's a couple that are ser super serious that seem to kind of silently creep in and uh, not, not, not much not much news about it, a little bit, but I did want to talk to you about it. Uh, one is airbag danger. Ford and Mazda say don't drive these pickups at all. Uh, it ends up being their uh, Ranger pickup. Uh, so the uh, the airbag at the, that company in Japan, uh, uh, the device that they made used a chemical that degrades and the and that changes its its uh, explosive properties when it goes off to inflate the bag to be ex literally explosive. Uh, these uh, these 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 car these trucks are, uh, will kill can kill you. They're saying don't drive them at all. So uh, I'm just wondering whether or not you can put a blast shield over your steering wheel, and maybe take it down to your dealer. There is supposed to be a fix on this for those of you that may have have the truck. Uh, or this, or the type of truck that they're calling. I'll have a, a link in the broadcaster. That's all I want to tell you. Uh, p pay attention uh, to this one. Uh, uh, you can get it fixed. Anybody you lo love one you know, or no, even if you see someone, even your enemy, if you don't want them to die that way, maybe some other way, maybe in a ball of flame, not just a blast of a blast of uh, metal in their face. Uh, and, and maybe you want to warn them to, to, to the to the future time when they can go off in a bl in a ball of flame. Uh, the, the thing is that this is a real dangerous thing. The, the company saying don't drive these trucks. So. Uh, this is a serious thing. Lots of people have died, so uh, just want to warn you about that. There's nothing now with your uh, uh, your little babies, your, your little pets that you have. They're not not your goats, not your child, but the the, uh, the little fur uh, babies and hair babies. Uh, we've got a problem with dog food here, uh, and it's pretty uh, apparently uh, the problem I'm seeing is this, it's a serious problem that is being fought and resisted by the company a bit. But I needed to talk to you about this because I don't understand why uh, a euthanasia a euthanasia drug at all would be in a pro product processing plant for a dog food. Uh, Gravy Train, Old Boy, and other brands recalled for euthanasia drug. Uh, Sh J.M. Schmucker Company has voluntarily withdrawn certain shipments, certain shipments of 27 different food uh, products following the media reports of a phenobarbital contamination in some of the Gravy Train dog food. Well, it's more than that. It's kibbles and bits and some others. But at any rate... Um, you'll get. I just wanted to, those of you that to feed your food. If you're really caring about your animals, I really don't know how you can consider this stuff that they have. You go look at the how they what this stuff is. Uh, the ingredients that that make this food. This is really low level food anyway. Uh, that you, I don't know why you'd be feeding your uh, your your little one, your little babies there, your little pets, uh, your, your family members, uh, even though they're they're just property, folks. Don't don't get lost in that either. Uh, we we take on this family uh, airship, uh, air, uh, this familiness with the pets that we have, but uh, the legal system says it's just a thing, uh, and it's a property, and it's just like that herd that they manage that they call you the human. It's all reduced down to that, and so don't think that you have uh, much more to say than that part. But that they're willing to get uh, the government agency has said that there's some phenobarbital. Smuckers is saying it's not necessarily in all cases. I'm looking at the ingredients of the product, and saying why would you feed that to yourself anyway? Uh, feed it to yourself. That's right. That's where we're going, folks. <laughs> why would you feed that to yourself anyway, or your dog? Uh, but that, that's a decisions that you all make. Uh, my thought is, if you didn't, if you stopped buying this nonsense food, that they'd stop doing that. We wouldn't worry about this feed of barbitol. But what what is this, this euthanasia uh, contamination in a, in a food processing center? It is my problem with the how they do things and who how they process foods. And now we got it to the point with the epigenetic changes. The food processing, uh, you have to now have all your labels that you were li uh, these these uh, food so-called foods are are, are been uh, manufactured or processed in 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 buildings or by processes that may be contaminated by other certain foods like nuts and things like that. Why? Because we have these allergies that all of a sudden have popped up as well as everything else we talked about. And I really do hope you appreciated what I was saying last uh, last week. Uh, when I suggest that you go to see Title 50, I hope uh, all of you went. Although I don't know. You need to go Title 50 and see what that's about. Uh, this is a, in the law. They get to do this to all y'all. All this is nonsense, but it's all there for the of the bottom line. I keep telling you that. You need to see that black and white. It's not just my opinion. It's just not something you could go uh, nod your head agreeably and, uh, and then you move along. You need to really see there's this thing inside this system that we live in that's been allowed upon us that we uh, need, necessarily need to know more than an opinion. Because it needs to be addressed, and we get to see now what what's this chemical doing in this food, the dog food factory, fa processing food factory, and uh, you know I'm telling you that that's the 
that may be in your food. That's how this thing works. You don't know what they're putting in this stuff. And so this begin, brings up a whole another idea, you know, about them being able to put together these processed things uh, and what might be the plan for that. Now, why would a nation uh, allow for these chemicals and stuff to be in your food at all? But they do. And that's because it's like the Clean Water I keep telling you about the Clean Water Act. It's all the same model and same plan. The Clean Water Act is not an act of clean water. It's real interesting. I say that, and I think about all the people that now speak to it about it this way. <laughs> they didn't say that before I started saying this, but that's okay. And I hope it's just not a, a rote discussion about this statement. The Clean Water Act is not an act of clean water. It's an act to an act to be able to pollute so much because government gives license, and license is the permission to do a, some sort of crime, uh, it, but for that license, permit, certification, registration. All right. So I just said registration. You want to register your gun. What was the crime about your gun? The, the arm, I would have to say. You're keeping bare arm. What's the crime about that? What's the commerce about that? None of us even, none of us, I say none of us in general, none of us even consider that this is what's going on around us. So government gives license to itself to be get beyond prohibitions when, in fact, it has no authority to do so. So, And I have, uh, I, I see crickets everywhere. I see everyone arguing with me or arguing the wrong argument, thinking that their opinion's better than just going back to what the other what the enemy is 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 uh, promising that they would follow. That's the only quickest way I know to get to this. But so these processing things are going on. Most of us uh, certainly listen. I'm singing to the choir here. Uh, most of us understand this processing is not really uh, really too keen, is it? Uh, so here was a, a study real quickly. Your processed foods are driving up uh, rates of cancer. Well, we just heard that they'll put phenobarbital in dog food. What do you think, folks? But well, here we are. Processed foods are driving up rates of cancer. How do I tell you to redress the world? It's an ongoing court case. You better take the evidence as you find it so you can protect yourself down the road when you're forced to do certain things. And that is coming in this processed food thing uh, as we're starting to see the government wanting to confine everybody into its, its products or the products of its corporations. Eating processed food significantly raises the risk of cancer, experts warned last night. Well, I guess eating that dog food would significantly raise the risk of death. So I guess cancer would be a, an interesting uh, diversion, wouldn't it? At least it would give you a couple of months. Let's say they, they said that the disease, the disease now, was uh, claiming more lives because of the popular popularity of ready meals, sugary cereals, and fizzy drinks. Now, I won't go through the rest. You all know about that. They even have a set. It's not just processed food. There's also ultra-processed foods driving up cancer rates. Well, what did we talk last week? Driving up cancer rates. What did we talk last week? Driving up also uh, suicidal things. Uh, I can go to all the neurological, whatever the heck the word is. It doesn't matter. We, can, we, can put, we just understand that this is what's going on, not because we know. We now have the evidence. And if you want to continue to live in this society or watch your little ones grow up into this society, that this is okay because the government can give license to criminals to, do, to kill you just a little bit. Continue to be crickets. Continue to be groundhogs that eat crickets. And you climb out once a year to see your shadow and be afraid of it, I suppose. But remember, Patsitani Phil said, no matter whether I see my shadow or whether I don't, donate to RLM, reallibertymedia.com. Hit that donate button. Figure out how to get some money to the servers that keep what we're doing going. I'm going to do this one all day. Really disappointed that we didn't didn't get that. Uh, simple. It seemed like a simple amount of money. That's the price. What we what uh, Grimner was asking for is the price of a lawsuit. Together, right now, we couldn't afford to sue for our to protect our property rights. Can, if you can get that part, because the cost of justice is that high now. Notwithstanding the constitutions that you might read that said that there, there is not supposed to be a cost for justice. Think about the occupying force that changed that. When you kind of challenge that and they say, no, it's okay to charge you a fee before we give you anything. So processed foods are driving up cancer rates. You can read the story. I'm not going to do that. You need to see this stuff yourself. You need to qualify these yourself. I'm pointing out that the inference is here. We can pull, collect it up. We can stick it in our bag of law on the wrong. We need to be right, even though against us. When they start forcing stuff down our throat, we can say, well, that's why I don't eat processed food. Besides, it tastes pretty bad. I don't like eating the dog food in my regular food either. So, we, we have something here that's very important. In the news is the notice that they allow phenobarbital even in a processing center. Why? I'm telling you there's a whole lot of other stuff that they let in. And these are the little cracks that come up 
If, again, the FDA would have never got involved if it was underneath a threshold. And that's partly what's cool about these uh, these thresholds. What the problem is, is they don't use the uh, same uh, thing they put on you uh, for cautionary pr principle, the precautionary principle. They don't they don't save it for you. They put it for the corporation making the product and the bottom line transfer from you uh, to them, to it. And then they exploit you as the human resource to be able to extract whatever they want to, but they have to get your consent. It's really a simple plan, and they got us wired, boy, big time. Uh, so processed foods are driving up cancer rates. You can uh, let that pass or not, and uh, part of that becomes a problem this week. All at the same time, uh, when we hear about this story called the, uh, or this plan now, administrative plan for the United States the Department of Agriculture through the Trump administration, the Blue Apron SNAP proposal, the SNAP proposal, this is your welfare now, your new stuff, uh, with the with the EBI card, the credit card. You're not getting any money anyway here. And this is the other joke behind all this. Uh, pro the new uh, Blue Apron, quote, Blue Apron snap proposal showcases the worst of the Trump administration was the opinion of the uh, Washington Post. But in this case, I have to agree. This is the, the people, the one guy that uh, proposed this ha has no dignity in him over this problem of people not being able to get food. In a, in a, and here's my problem with it. The United States Department of Agriculture is the same department that has constricted lo t uh, logging in the uh, in the uh, in the um, in the western states and allowed it instead to burn by this forest fire policy that had they gone back and just followed the law of improving harvest in the public land and the forest reserves and this particularly the forest reserves is what the United States Department of Agriculture's Forest Service has jurisdiction over, if they go back and they would start to log the forest instead of watching it burn to nothing, to ash and destruction, they would be creating the jobs that would be moving people off of any welfare rolls and reducing the amount of money that they claim they're trying to save. When they do the blue apron, you get your food in a box and it's going to be oh so nutritious. If you read through this story, it's pretty sickening what, they, what you see omitted. I tell you, watch the omissions. They don't talk about it being to be palatable. They talk about it's going to be nutritious by some some by bureau rats to chart somewhere. And I don't know about if you've ever seen the, like what they said, the government cheese. There's just something about those products that's not necessarily the same. However, they do come out of, and I do know, I worked a cannery a long time ago. Uh, you know, one cannery will do the processing for a bunch of different brands. And at that point, you start realizing how stupid the ridiculousness of this whole thing is to have a to have this so-called private company making a box of food they're going to hand you equal to half of what they would give you in an EBT card saying it was going to save money uh, and you were going to have better uh, better guidance on your nutrition uh, is an insult to people on its face. They're going to give you this processed food we just read is going to give you cancer. And if you get a recalled item in that food and you ate it and didn't get the message, it may kill you. And, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know about you, but I know most people uh, that have uh, a need of welfare and have lots of, of kids and mouths to feed, there's not much left. And uh, that moms uh, typically will make that stretch pretty far, uh, that they don't want uh, their their offspring to have uh, this uh, confined uh, meals ready to eat nonsense uh, that's uh, maybe having, well, has different stat strategies going on. Why would you want, and have a bunch of uh, little ones to eat, drink milk, why would you want shelf-stable milk? And what is that? If it's not sterilized completely of anything. Uh, that we, there would not be a drop of milk in a, in a household of people who are needing the welfare and the kids to feed, uh, to be worried about shelf-stable, is the kind of nonsense we start seeing with this. Uh, the the indignity of, of having to go somewhere to ride, you're going to be forced to ride your bike in probably in order to get this box of food that has processed food that we now see the report is for cancer. That's why I'm tying this all together. Uh, at this point, uh, you, you I don't know what the better transmission system of of all this stuff is, as cheap as they could do it, that you do go to a Walmart in order because their their processing shipping system is much better than you now having to go down and pick it up, pick up your stuff in a box. And I don't know about you, but I don't know of a family who would need the welfare uh, because they can't go get their their husbands and their wives or whoever can't go out in the forest and cut trees that are all burning up in the summer anyway. Uh, why they couldn't be working at very high level wage jobs there to do that? Why they would have to be subjected to this box thing uh, in the first place, or someone else's idea of what fresh is and nutritious and not be actually not actually be 
raw and organic or any of that stuff that you would do for yourself. Notwithstanding, anybody I know tries to, if you can't, you try to do for leftovers all at the same time, more efficient. What I also get out of this program is what they're doing here in this blue box uh, type program where you will receive food instead of receive cash, folks. The quote off the front, you don't receive the cash unless it's in the change coming back, and even then the EBT card will only charge out what you need to take. So there's no cash here. This is all a big setup. Uh, this whole thing is is no 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 has no actual purpose, except it does give people more processed food and refi and refined bureau rats uh, bureau rats trying to feed you their their regurgitations. Uh, it's not based on any any need. And so you 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 are not able going to, going to be able to go in the future. They're going to take half of your stuff away, so they only half starve half half starve you. You're probably going to have to go down to a food bank because they're not going to want to give you the so the, the stuff that you would do, and they're not going to feed you the way you've been accompanied accompanied and uh, you've been accustomed to as you grew up in your culture. Remember, in diversity there is monoculture. There is no diversity. You're going to like your oatmeal. That's it. You're going to get that bowl of pottage that that, that, that was was given up because you didn't insist better. And these are people that need that, that would be to work. As far as I looking at it through the flogging side, these are people that would be working. They were working before. They're having to take these lesser jobs now, and now they get stuck in in less than 29 hours a week. They need help too. And if we all sit back and don't uh, don't show the absurdity of this uh, this whole prog pr process, we're going our society starts to go down in other ways. And you don't want hungry people. That's that's one thing that I've told you before. They've managed this hunger thing. Now it looks like they're going to start to constrain. They're going to go to us. This is austerity, the start of austerity as well. That you don't, that they didn't come out and start to open up logging to create more jobs before they start constraining the need in the food. If they would have needed to do it anyway or if even plausible that they could do it. It has to show you this is a, this is a very terrible plan that, that Trump is, is going to, well, apparently agrees with. And so for all you, you know, Trumpsters, be, be careful on what what you think is happening uh, on the greater scheme of things. It, my view is uh, the USDA needed to make every opportunity of employment ready to go first before they ever thought about looking at interfering with pe how people feed themselves. And then the other thing on top of all this, on top of it all, I realized, well, they're gonna, this, this administration wants to pay a public-private partnership in condition now, this Blue Apron is, is not necessarily the company Blue Apron, but they're going to go like the style of it. But it ends up being they're going to have to get someone to do the private part of this uh, that will be the food distributor. It occurs to me that they're agreeing that they've ripped everybody off because they're willing now, the government's willing to save money. They're willing to pay a private uh, enter, uh, enter, entity to do all the stuff that people have been doing for themselves and not got paid for. They want to go, they don't want to, they're now willing to pay for the, the, the cost of the warehousing, the cost of the of the uh, of the food preparation, and the cost of the transportation back and forth that they never paid to anybody before now. In other words, they've ripped every family off for the storage, the the, go, the getting of the food, and the preparing of the food. They never paid anybody for that. They ripped their they ripped that value away. They stole it from people for all these years. If they go to this thing as well is another indication to me this is not made to, to, to help you. It never has been, although it helps you. But remember, your, your, your fundamentals are driven by the decisions and the policies of the government. So as I show you this, if, if you can understand what I'm saying about this logging, yes, maybe a lot of people wouldn't be involved, but I can tell you out west where there is timber, there is hundreds of thousands of people that start to get employed that wouldn't be looking at all. In fact, they start buying things. They start going out into the, they start developing the economy around, providing even more, even more that, that may, jobs out there that are secondary and tertiary economies from raw materials production. And this is what, I just want, again, okay, so this is a problem. you got the processed foods. You know what's going to be in this. I don't care that they call about it's going to be uh, uh, nutritious. That nutrition is based on a false premise as well. But they're going to give you the food that's processed uh, that we now find as a report for uh, that shows it's uh, cancerous or cancer-causing of some sort. And if you get your facts together, you can be a voice against uh, this, this other style of oppression and destruction of a society of people.
yes, we're, we're pretty ignorant of, uh, generally, but you don't have to keep perpetuating that by remaining silent. And so, to move on, got more, all kinds of stuff to talk about. I get lost in some ways. I'm talking to you, and all my thoughts are going a thousand different places. I start start wanting to talk about it all. Just don't have the time. And uh, going on, but next tab all ties together eventually if you pay attention, but uh, not in the point to my mind. You pay it ties it together, and then you sort of sit back and say, how "All knowing, you can see uh, how comprehensive all the the, uh, the oppression is," and then you just sit there. It's not really going to help anybody, not even your, you. You uh, and you may be one of the higher level. Maybe not giving it to RLM, uh, Radio uh, Real Liberty Media. You're not giving it to our Real, Real Liberty Media, but you feel content in that you're in a status that you can avoid this for a long time, and it's not going to affect you. So I, I guess we can sit there and, and do that, but that's not going to be proper either. Again, hungry people. Well, you just go look around the world and look at Venezuela. Again, you th you folks in, uh, you think you, you're all privileged folks in the United States where you think you're different than anywhere else, you really have to get a better eyeball on what's going on now. Behavioral abnormalities, another thing what they allow on to you, you know, because it's the bottom dollar and then it says their controls and all that kind of stuff, they get to extract all kinds of things. But for those of you looking for some information, this is a, apparently a, a, te a um, study that was done back in 2016. Uh, I just got a hold of it. Now, just to let you know, it's out there. Uh, and because of the, we were talking about the vaccines and all this thing, here's the, the HPV uh, r r as a focus, but not really that as well. Remember I told you also uh, that the adjuvants are the things that you need to really look at. Those are the ones that are supposed to irritate your immune system uh, into action that makes it work better. And so here we have a test that came out regarding the an adjuvant. Uh, behavioral abnormalities in female mice following administration of aluminum adjuvants and the human papil papillomavirus, HPV, vaccine, Gardasil. So you don't say, oh, uh, oh okay, so uh, uh, papil uh, the uh, HPV virus is no, uh, uh, the vaccine's uh, garbage, no good. No, you start getting the proof by citing to other people. You need to read this report. You need to understand what's going on. And my interest in this was when you're, while you're standing there injecting these rats and doing these tests, why'd you just do the females, given that they were going to go to the males as well, those without those uh, those reproductive organs. Oh, because you can pass it on. Well, it's not about that. It's just about a story. Uh, same story, uh, same wrong story applied everywhere. Uh, but uh, here you are. Uh, if the adjuvants was what was point what I was talking about last week. I said uh, better do a check. Someone uh, somehow I got this. I don't remember where I got. I apologize for the whoever I got this from. But here it is. We can just read it to you now. And I'll just read the first sentence. Vaccine adjuvants and vaccines may induce autoimmune and inflammatory manifestations in susceptible individuals. So you can ignore it, or you can just spout off, oh yeah, they're no good, or you can understand the mechanism and be articulate in how you produce the this point and then move it on to the next. Because once you find that this is a, a, a uh, the study shows that there's a problem here, and, and the limitations, don't speak outside of limitations here, because that's what the so-called well, the adjective science will attack you on when you step outside of it. Stay within it. You don't have to go far. But then it brings up the question on all the others that haven't been checked. And now you go to your data sheet again and say, oh, that's what they must be talking about here, that it may cause death. It may cause cancer. It may cause uh, whatever. What, Gillian Bars, whatever. I, don't, I really don't get into it. If I wanted to find the information, it's uh, within a fingertip control anymore. And that's why I guess I get frustrated with, with some of you all. We have the information to pull together to really be a formidable force against this nonsense, and we don't. We don't. Not even for our things that we're interested in. And they go through an interesting discussion in this uh, in this the link that I'll give you in the blogcaster. Uh, just go through. You can read it. Yeah, it's technical, but get your mind up in that area. Get your mind in the, in the dialogue. Start being able to, you don't have to sound like a scientist, but at least use some of the terminology that's relevant to the very particular point you're after when you get to, like, in this case, that adjuvants. A cause it. No, they also showed that the adjuvant and the vaccine may have an interactive problem, but that wasn't really the study. So, point is, there's evidence to show there's problems. And I was saying last, I've said it, I say it all the time, the government allows the problems. The Clean Water Act was actually an act to pollute water so much. And then uh, if you didn't quite get the cynical little point about that act, and if you don't tell them that you polluted uh, whatever, you get penalized big time. But if you po polluted a lot and you told them, there's no penalty at all. 
You learn how to speak if you haven't understood how that works. I know a lot of you will know about that. I feared for my life is one of those phrases of immunity. There's another one in the clean water. Oops, sorry, but here's the phone call. Here's the report. And it doesn't, and now it's written off. So you look very carefully inside of all these uh, laws. And there's, again, and I, I can, if you, you got to kick back a little bit. There isn't perfection in the world regarding people. And so this is what that's supposed to do. But there's people that take advantage of that spread, if you will, of, of, of leeway. And, you know, they, they put it in the couch in pretty un, indeterminate terms. Like for minors, it's undue and unnecessary degradation. What the heck are those mean? Well, there's a whole process behind that when you understand it, and it isn't what the agenda, uh, the agenda, yeah, the agency says. In fact, in fact, getting, I'll be moving on. We were talking, I was talking to a, a federal defense attorney here, and she started throwing that out. I go, but you're missing. There's a whole due process. There's two due process procedural steps that you've missed to be able for before you can even get to point that out. That's being ignored, and the, the courts are violating property owners because of it. And so I'm just bringing up my advancing to you at some point. If you understand how this is really supposed to work, you really get in and out, deny what you see out there and start embracing what's supposed to happen that's not, you're going to be sitting much more powerfully in your in your objection to it than someone who walks in and, and whines about the, the touchy-feely, warm and fuzzy stuff. So uh, here's another test. Uh, the adjuvant, important, the aluminum adjuvant is causing problems. Uh, you can read for the extent. Uh, we were talking about the vaccines and this and that and other things and the problems and uh, this this year's flus and particularly uh, the, the particularly troublesome is particularly for for vaccines was a Jim Buff 33 33 this was near and dear to my heart because when I was 32 I had uh, that sepsis condition I told you about killed me but I survived it I'm you know, one of the only people I know that survived it uh, went for two and a half weeks and it kills people in four I've told you that story well this is what this guy apparently has it's not just about the vaccine that he got, and the flu that he gets, but it's the complications that started to spring out from a, a healthy guy. Probably the prime, I think 33 or so, around that 30 to 36, is probably the, the prime uh, of a male's life, I would suspect, in, in certain ways. Health, strength, uh, awareness. You still don't have the wisdom, but but you got an insight to it, and you, then you got the capability. And so in the prime of your life, you get struck down by something completely foreign to what you can deal with. A man is set to lose his fingers and toes today after a month-long battle with the flu. And Joey Smith, 33, 33, folks, here's that magic number for those of you tracking that, was uh, told he just had just 24 hours to live when he arrived at the ER in Dallas, Texas. That's not the flu, folks. That's this uh, condition he got. Uh, from this, and I believe it was uh, pneumonia uh, at, that he gets, uh, with it, and he's got a sepsis condition, so I believe, uh, without knowing, I think he had the same problem that I got into many, many years ago, uh, where he may have tried to sneeze or hold back his sneeze, tore, tore the, the pleural sac where uh, the bacterial problem for the where the manifesting the pneumonia was in his lung, that bacteria got into his blood system, and, and once that happens, you have about four days to live. Uh, and serious is up. It's more serious than a heart attack. <laughs> to take aspirin, you might survive that. Uh, so he had influenza with sepsis, pneumonia, and kidney failure. He's in late. He's in late term here, folks, uh, and he still survives it when they get him in. But because of the drugs they gave him, he loses. Uh, he loses um, circulation to his extremities. Uh, no different in a way that you can see doing for frostbite, as your body pulls blood into the core. Uh, now he doesn't have blood in his fingers. They didn't do anything to try and get induced blood flow to his to his extremities. My first, and I don't know, folks. I just think, why don't you just stick him in a vacuum, put uh, his hands in a very strong vacuum, and get and then 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 compressor, and then compress it, and then vacuum and then compress and get this the tissue to start to try and move uh, blood flow while that was going on, while he was under the worst of it. But okay, so the flu shot starts this thing. It induces a bunch of counter problems, which is not the flu now. He almost dies, but he's now going to, because of the flu and the starting of it and the weakening of a healthy body, he's, he's going to lose fingers and toes. And lucky at that, folks, if I can just put it that way. So this is what you get to do uh, with the with a government that allows uh, the bottom line to override the profit. How many times I know all of a sudden now uh, Bush's uh, statement comes up that sometimes, uh, well, a, a lot of times, if not every time, commercial interests trump peace. 
Uh, they're making war against you here, folks. So the, they're, they still gave you medications and they don't give you what they're supposed to in order to make war upon you because the bottom line of what they do, they're telling you what I've been, ta- what I've been saying. They say it in different words. The bottom line trumps your peace. Well, they're not supposed to breach the peace. So you're there in a vi- we're in a facial violation right up front. I don't have to go far. I don't have to argue much. When, if you don't appreciate what I'm saying, you live in a war zone in your life. You are not living in peace, and whoever is imposing that is a facial crime. I don't care how you delineate, whether it's felony, whether it's a treason, whether it's a war criminal, whatever, it's a crime against you. Everyone, too. So we sit back as crickets, and we allow them. We're the accessories to the crime against us. And that said, we can only do so much. In fact, I've had a couple people, we're getting weary, folks. There's a lot of us that have been together, and we're having to talk to each other and say, you know, I can't keep up this way. And we have to re- now reassess how we're going to continue to uh, to be- do the battle. There's not many people that quite understand because everyone thinks they understand. So they fight you. Disregard reality, but that's okay. We know what we're doing, and they don't. So here's a here's how they treat you, folks. And then we have a th- another story coming up. An Aetna, quote, fake accounts level scandal was a question. Medical director admits he never reviewed medical records before denying care. Here was your death cha- your, your death panel discussion, right? And one thing, uh, this is the care they withhold without even reviewing your situation. This is, to me, just the method of the, the doctors that are just looking at, to provide you symptoms that they can uh, give you pharmaceuticals to treat. Could care less about the side effects. Don't have an answer for that. But this is what they're going to do. There's people in positions already, if we didn't know it, Obama scare, Trump scare, I don't care what you call it. Uh, remember, they're pulling back that care now uh, to the tune of billions. Was it one? I don't remember the number. $1.35 billion. It's being pulled out of that system. How are you going to get the care they want? And then they start feeding you this box food because you don't, they don't get you, let you get back up in the forest to drive a water truck to help the, the limber fall, the tum, timber fallers to drop trees to stick them back at the mill, let those guys and gals go to work. And then the, the trains and stuff that move the timber back up to build the houses people need. No, we don't want to do it that way. We want to give you a box, a box of poison food that gives you cancer. And, and we're going to look next to our neighbor that receives that box because they got nothing else. And we're going to say, well, that's cool. They're getting to eat. And then you meet up this guy when you need some care, and he doesn't even look at your record. He just says, no. Denied. Just like we see in the courts all the time. Well, up until recently. No, we don't even get that. We don't even get a denial. They, they just can't they can't get themselves up to make that obvious violation to actually put the denial. Why? Because we're speaking a lot better on the point. I don't get off on You don't get off on this stuff when you, you know, go, go far from what your point is. On these things, this is the proof that the behind the scenes and the mutual uh, death condition, uh, uh, underwriting all these medical things, there's people making decisions and they don't review records. They're the guys and the gals that either get a phone call from the doctor who who may have other thoughts, uh, even even as controlled as they might be, to want to give you the pharmaceuticals that they know will hurt you. And they'll tell you that if you get them in the right place, and get, phrase the point in the right time. They'll explain that this is a harm, uh, that even contrary to what they might feel, this guy or uh, this gal might be, uh, don't care what he's saying. Uh, when you, the Obama phone gets rung about the care that you're going to give, that care will be denied. Big death stamp. And what kind of care, again, are they giving us? When they do give the care, what do they do? And this brought up uh, the, the story of the week, I guess I can say, and really... I, I didn't. I really didn't want to spend much time on it. And, and in a way, it was kind of funny because I didn't. I, my mind wasn't even into this thing, and it, it shocked me to, to realize that uh, when I started to see some players, I said, "Looks like I've seen those people before," and realized I was absent the thought. I was actually looking at it, looking at this event, this incident, uh, it really neutral, without any thought about where it, where the originated. Just thinking about it in reality, that it was a real thing, and it still could be a real thing. Uh, that I realized that uh, the word hoax hadn't come in my mind, but I'm looking at people that I thought I saw in other videos uh, in prior prior events. And we're talking about the school shooting uh, the, in Florida. Now, the big news, but uh, again, I'm looking at uh, telltale signs for other things as well. And uh, something comes up pretty quickly. It seemed to be 
made invisible the whole entire time until now, until just recently it's been now creeping out as a suggestion of the family. Uh, from Prozac to Parkland, are psychotic drugs causing mass shootings? Was the question right after the killings that happened in Florida. And uh, I'm not going to get into, did it not hoax, no, false flags, real people die in false flags. I don't know what this was. I do know that it's repetitive. It has its own thing. And if you look past all this uh, noise, you start to see a pattern of something that's being covered over. And it ends up being the government bottom line. And the whole system of that's been pointed out by this article, could these uh, pharmaceuticals be the cause? And I want to point out with what I saw, I think you can see a direct path in the what was going on in the news relative to this question, how the system is closes ranks and however it's come about protects that whole entire question from scrutiny or the development of evidence to uh, to examine uh, the, uh, the the actual point and this becomes the uh, massive injustice to the one who is affected and does do the killing because in the in the, in most countries uh, let me offer that there's this thing called the insanity defense now they have a different name for it but the point is there's an insanity defense and if those are causing that then guess what happens later but let me read some of this I won't even read it I just point out the the headline tells us that we are looking at something it's not guns it, it's a, it's another cause the guns are the are the tool of the of the destruction. It could be really anything, but these seem to be the, the focus, and it also seems to be the agenda. Remember, the Bar Association agrees with an organization in New York who's in the plaza, is in the middle of the, of the plaza, is a pistol with a knot tied in the barrel, and it's an international foreigner sitting on our soil uh, called the United Nations that doesn't want uh, doesn't want arms because they know that the tyranny. It, it's the final, the Second Amendment is the final answer. And and you better not make that, mis you better not make a mistake at that point. Otherwise, it, there is none. There's nothing left. You make that mistake once to disregard that. It's the, like I keep telling you, it's not where you're going to resort to. Hopefully, we're going to go there before because we're a lot more intelligent than what they've actually figured us out. And we've gone beyond what they've done to us. Uh, these chemicals, are they are they causing these psychotic drugs? Are they causing mass shootings? Well, I think that's a very good question in light of what happened over the over the uh, course of this uh, really quick shooting and then so-called uh, hearing and trial, uh, where I may I don't know if anybody heard it, but I, I was questioning uh, uh, the so-called defense team. It, it was really just a setup in my mind, but here it is: public defender. Or the next story was actually the first story that came out before the Prozac story. But I wanted to go backwards from what government will give you will sanction onto you that could cause a harm and then cover over the evidence of that harm and see that you understand if they did uncover that and they showed that there was actually the drugs inducing psychological problem that would then express itself all over the country on all the people that get these high uh, value uh, uh, extractions through these uh, government systems sanctioned by the government the public defender puts arm around florida gunman in court it was an uh, article out of the Daily Mail. I found this story very telling. If that came, this story came out the very next morning, and it was full, chock full of condemnation uh, on the uh, the guy, the kid who did the uh, who allegedly uh, did the the shooting. There is evidence. There might have well, there's some evidence, at least an, uh, by statement of a of a girl, uh, she heard the sh someone else shooting as well. Not going to get into all that. I want to go after how you're mistreated by the legal system and how this stuff goes flies underneath the radar of anybody who's not paying attention. Or if you get into the divisive action of this, well, we got to ban guns now, and oh, the guy to be crucified, and how can the attorney, how can the attorney defend him and all that? Well, the attorney doesn't defend him here, at least to, to my knowledge, and did nothing. The system protected him uh, to set this thing up, which would cover over the more improper important problem uh, but uh, a cowering as you can understand uh, this is a propaganda it had to be a propaganda piece uh, to get people uh, into supporting uh, the, the what was going down and accepting this next point a cowering nicholas cruz is who the shooter was alleged to be was con comforted comforted by his public defender as he was ordered held without bail during his first court appearance on thursday in connection of the deadly shooting in parkland florida high school on wednesday that left 17 dead and 14 injured what's interesting about this is there's been a, 
some Google searches that two days or so before this shooting, there was uh, news articles with dates that were saying that there was going to be 20, uh, 20 uh, students uh, dead on a shooting that, that hadn't happened yet. Uh, so we apparently, because the, the media was prepared to do the report, they saved three lives uh, after the fact. Uh, he kept his eyes down and didn't speak in court other than to confirm his name with a polite yes, ma'am, to the judge. Standing next to him was the public defender, Melissa McNeil, who comforted him by putting a hand around his shoulder. Understand this is a site, this kid's been adopted, they're setting up a psychological harm problem, a family problem, a multiple home problem with this to try and show that there's an underlying problem that's not what these drugs are, it's just who this kid is now, and uh, the motherly uh, uh, the motherly uh, attorney's going to put his arm around, her arm around him, uh, that's his defense. After hearing the Cruz's defense team revealed that he was on suicide watch and that he understood the magnitude of his actions. Now, I read that and I said, well, how is that a defense team when he, they just took away his ability to use an insanity defense? Or at least they've, they highly diminished the fact by them saying that he understood the magnitude of his actions. This is a setup for the takedown. They have taken away his ability to even get on the, uh, the, the ability he may have been interfered with by some Saint, some government certified pharmaceuticals that interfered with him and has caused this over time. And you'll start to read this in the stories, how they set this up. And this is the glaring omission that they try to cover by all this. They take away his insanity defense by saying he understands what's going on. He's remorseful. He, com he understands what's happening to him. He understands what he did. He, he feels uh, that he needs to, you know, now, now just atone for his sin, apparently. In fact, he says, he's sad, he's mournful, he's remorseful. He is fully aware of what is going on, and he's just a broken human being. It is not a defense team in a nation that recognizes insanity defenses. It's a setup for the takedown. You think this woman's protecting him, and she's just thrown him under the bus. Would I believe that a full that the, that it, it's, that his insanity defense would be actually workable? I don't know. We'd have a, now, now we're never going to find out. It's not. It can't be tested, can it? For sure. But do you understand that if if he doesn't uh, if he does uh, so go after a, an insanity defense, his penalty would be put for an indeterminate time in a men's, mental committed in a mental institution, wouldn't it? Well, that that time is determined by uh, so-called uh, specialists that would look at his psychological stability, and if it's found that the pharmaceuticals caused it and they pull him off, and over some time of years he shows that off of them he does okay, they get to release him, don't they? But then it proves the pharmaceuticals that the government sanctioned on him were the cause, and they stuck him there. So if you start looking at how this starts to work in the processing of, of this, it starts to me to tell a different story, and I hope you're... I hope you're seeing that. I mean, I hope you you can start to work out how this has been really just, a, it seems like a setup, and they're doing, they're destroying aspects of justice. They're, they're, they're destroying the, 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 the notion of justice by admitting into the problem that due process would allow to condemn him. And so we could read on and on on this, I just wanted to point out the fact that she comes out with her words and already commits him into uh, the into doing it, understanding, eliminating his, eliminating his de his defenses. Shackled and cowering in court, Florida high school shooter confesses. And there's a this is a zero head story. And what was probably Cruz's last meal as a free man? They go now. They start talking about all that's going on. I have a serious problem between this kid being out from the school and away for an hour, able to do all they said, and then they pick him up without. They haven't made a big connection yet uh, at all. He's just found uh, some time away, and they show now that there's this plausible thing that happened. That's completely impossible to me. But the point ultimately be, is we can get involved with what happened. But they just took away his insanity defense. And they took away, once he gets into an insanity defense, they get to attack the drugs that he was on. And that goes into evidence that everybody can rely on. And so, the, so everybody closes, closes ranks and they keep him from doing that. 
And if he, and, and to me, I look at a kid that's in trouble, and I don't know what drugs he's on right now to re, be responding, cowering and all that stuff. Ooh, that's indicative, indicative of another pharmaceutical. How is he supposed to respond in that regard? Anyway, we don't hear him saying that. We hear them saying that, the system. And so I, I just brought this out. Uh, they talk about how, you know, beat down and shackled and all this, and they condemn him right in the public eye with all this news. And yet where they're taking away a critical defense strategy, uh, again, I can't know that it's going to actually pan out for him, but they took it away. He can't use it now. That would get at this question. Are pharmaceuticals causing this? Well, they can't let that happen if their agenda is to stop your guns too, which is, creates more division anyway. So I, I made some observations on Twitter, memorialize them there, I suppose. Um, just to, just ideas. Maybe I don't communicate them so well and I read them back to you here, but I want you to hear them anyway. Uh, you can find them on my feed at uh, Behind a Woodshed on Twitter. But I, I, on these points and questions, I said, and are those plea victims inadequately government defended with a government-caused insanity defense? If so, isn't it cruel and unusual punishment to commit them back into the very system which sanctioned their harm? What is proper medical health treatment if government caused? And I've asked for John Rappaport's response, and it hasn't been coming, and I don't really expect it, and it's not a slight to him. Maybe he's busy, but I would like to have a few minds who are always in on this and with some clarity to explain more better how that more better how this is really a justice at all and i use the word sanction particularly here uh, the sanction is a double edged sword word it's a, it it works you can sanction something to prohibit it or you sanction it to give it authority uh, and that i used both of those terms in that statement so isn't it cruel and unusual punishment to commit them back into the very system which sanctioned their harm he sanctioned for doing the act and he's was okay for them to cause it upon him to do the act. The government sanctioned both sides of that. And I, and I say that, I want, to, I want to remind you, the government works on both sides of the equation. This is a, a weird um, uh, accounting sheet, I can just tell you that. So that's one observation I had about these government defender, defenders uh, that are now co covering up what, what, would, what would be a government-caused insanity defense. You see the government involved at all, all around this. There's no independent review of any of this. You need to look right past into that. You need to notice is a, these are these are controllers. These are people that control this whole uh, this whole play, the sick play. Uh, and then uh, John Rappaport comes out and he comes out with uh, when people throw around the word broken, let's go to the source. Uh, let's get a professions a professional's opinion. He goes to the pharmaceutical thing. John Rappaport does. That's why I was interested to send see what he thought about how this. He was focused on the doctors and stuff doing this, and I said, "But look at the look at the uh, legal the, the so-called defense team throwing the the client under the bus under the color that they're taking care of him." This is a, a pretty integrated protection system. So I say, uh, to jo I ask, I comment back to John's position, right, John? Uh, and there appears a special intention to steer away from any type of insanity defense, as I pointed out yesterday, which would bring the entire matter into evidence. And I gave him three of my links from yesterday, and I have a hashtag, bar ass accomplice. I wanted him to notice that there's not just the doctors and the cops and whoever else, that the bar association members are involved in this. Uh, in this constraint of uh, uh, of ju actual justice under the color of providing it. And I had some other links on YouTube that came through. It says uh, they made a comment. He's fully aware of what he was doing. That was the defense, in quotes, the defense attorney statement. If you say that, then you take away this defense and you'll never get to the reason why. They won't let it get out that he was underneath the influence of pharmaceuticals because it's not relevant once he knew what was going on. He agrees, he waves his argument that he could have been under the influence by saying, notwithstanding whatever I was on, I knew exactly what I was doing. Take, takes away that question as to uh, intent and knowing. The two things you need to do for doing a crime. And let me make this clear. I'm not trying to protect a murderer. 
But in this country, uh, you're also, first of all, presumed innocent. Secondly, there is this defense that says if you're incapacitated, you can't be held to the knowledge of intent and uh, knowing. If you're mentally or physically incapacitated by something or interfered with, that requires a different type of sentence and a different type of, of um, uh, what's it called? The word is slipping my mind. It's uh, rehabilitation. Uh, see, these, these prisons aren't supposed to be put, you're not supposed to be put there for punishment. They're supposed to be due to kind of give you the idea that you, that was not a good idea. But within them are supposed to be the more altruistic purpose of rehabilitation. In a, in a place of a mental incapacity, it's to try and find out what's doing the, what's causing it and can we remove some of it. And to the extent it can be removed is the extent the, that one can be put back into society. What they call that, you know, that the productive, and again, you human resource, you, the productive human, the productive citizen. And, and so th this is a, the other question I had about this. Uh, again, I've said it, uh, that when they point out they said it was a defense team. I asked the question, this is a crack defense team, ain't it? A rhetorical question. The quote was, after the hearing, Cruz's defense team revealed that he was on suicide watch and that he understood the magnitude of his actions. Then I say, and what is specifically missing with all MSM stories regarding the mental, the mental illness? You'll never see anything really talked about in any certain way that there was any problem more than he was mentally, had mentally problem, but they don't talk about it beyond that. And then they come at it, notwithstanding his mental illness, he understands the magnitude. That's throwing him under the bus. He has no defense. He might, he might as well just put him on the prison side and throw away the key. He's never going to get help there either, is he? It wasn't mental, was it? No, he just becomes another piece of fodder to promote the whatever wanted to be promoted. I say in this uh, email, in this Twitter, uh, this is a setup case. From this evidence I'm seeing, this is a setup case. There's also an observation regarding the, uh, the now we're down to a number, 2.5 uh, mass shootings now in the schools every day in America. And I wanted, I, I, folks, I'm open to it, but I thought I did here, and I asked the question, wasn't this predicted, I say planned actually, to be the fact uh, that, that we would have a, a number of these every day, uh, 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 a number of these mass shootings happening all the time now. Uh, wasn't that pr predicted in the, uh, uh, a number of years ago? And then I say this is hashtag, uh, this is a salute to social engineering. They've got us there, and they're saying 2.5. I understood it was going to be a little bit more infrequently than that. So let me get back quickly here to this setup case. The injustice within the uh, within the system that you think is working as it's what you all that have been involved with know know how it doesn't work when you get a, a, a government defense attorney uh, and you laugh I know and then you say well, well how do you fight this well there's 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 lots of options I, I can't talk to you if you're not open to it so it doesn't matter between me and you and that it doesn't matter you can listen to what I'm saying and you could change your perspective and understand the dynamic and maybe we go after th uh, after this another way but hopefully you're not in the condition where you're set in a criminal context and this is the kind of this is what I want to tr address right now the setup for the takedown these attorneys uh, as I'm pointing out to you they will claim they're doing this in the best advice to their client still advice he still has a decision to make but how can he make that decision if he's underneath the weather because of a government sanctioned pharmaceutical is is the conundrum in my mind in the minimum I'm not making any judgment more than just to look at that problem is the problem that I just we just were invited to uh, my, the my, Mining district, uh, people, two of us were invited to go talk with a federal defense attorney over a miner that's been given federal criminal charges, felony charge for doing his mining. Is super serious. What came out in, of the defense attorney's mouth within two minutes, I don't think it was more than two minutes, was that their main concern at this point was to be able to strike a plea deal, to negotiate a plea deal so that the minor would not be subjected to the felony. Let me remind you what they just did here. They just subjected this victim, uh, uh, Cruz, threw him under the bus, took away his, his insanity defense, because they're trying to get him off of what? Death row. If you don't read that into these stories, if you don't read, you're not, you're missing the whole setup. Now, 
not to get too much into what we were in, what we were asked in this meeting on the on the specifics. The attorney would not under under the objection that she was completely looking out for her client and that I didn't care about the client, which you have to know I absolutely do. I shouldn't even have to say that to y'all. And I did. That's how we work. But uh, she, underneath the authority that she was looking out for the client, would not entertain anything other than how to keep the plea deal open. Now, I'm going to pause here. I want you to think about this. This is where you get into the, those of you that read the words, this is where you get a torny. A torn, where you, all you're doing is you're going to, you're going to allow the authorita, however massively sovereign it seems to be, to have the prerogative to destroy you, and you'll take only what it gives you. And you'll take someone's property and a torn that in back into the government who has no authority to do what it's doing. And that's your primary focus as an attorney. And that's what I just walked into. And that was really fascinating to watch after reading this news things about Cruz. I saw the very same thing. Now, does it? So, that's what you're dealing with when you're getting these defense attorneys. They're, they're, they're focused on not shaking up the status quo. Everything I offered her as a, as a legitimate remedy was not going to happen. Should tell you everything you need to know about what the system does. It, I will just, I want you to expand this over to the Bundys, to the Hammonds, to the Seven Miners, to all those folks you see going to federal court. And I wanted to ask you something just to let you think about this. And this is how they do it to you. Um, they don't do it to me because I don't necessarily, well, they haven't done it to me because I don't let it, but I mean, because I know to look for it. And I'm not, a, I don't have anything, that, I don't have a system to protect in order to out it. Everything I was talking about would set the better record, would provide no ability for the prosecution to continue, and would attack the prosecution. Collateral attacks, as I keep telling you about. That was not going to happen in this case. It's all about protecting that plea bargain. Because once that, if you insult that prosecutor, you're never going to get that back. Is what the is the is what they hold over uh, the client's head, and I'm looking out to protect you against that problem. Uh, let me ask you something, though, folks. Under Title 18, those of you that read this stuff, and I keep asking you to go, you need to see the black and white. I don't care who you are, you need to go look at this stuff. Under Title 18, that's the criminal statutes of the federal government. Title 18, um, 1361. They go talk about all the little five problems that you can have when you on public land. Uh, and, uh, and and hurt the fish and whatever all else. Folks, can you tell me the 1361 relevant to po federal property, criminal actions on federal property, how is that relevant? And how can you force a minor to f have federal stat criminal statutes applicable to federal property? How do you hold a minor who has private property to answer to those pro those c crimes? How do you take a federal criminal statute applicable to pro federal property and force a private property owner to answer to that? It's something they do not want to try and quash or set aside or attack or uh, attack as a, as, a, as a takings or anything. And what they're doing is they're applying uh, federal laws, in this case that apply to federal property, onto a private property owner called a minor. And there is no spirit, mind, intention, or action, whatever, in the attorney to point that out. Is what's going on in the system to make you think that due process is going on, and the rest of you who got who were rendered by that machine, you saw the injustice, and you just cry out, but you never analyze how they're doing it to you. And so no one else knows either. But I come along, I want to tell you how they're doing it to you. It's the same, to me, it's really simple. It's the same method over and over. It just takes on different character characterization on how they do you. In this case, we have two attorneys by the same bar association whose only interest is to not make the system look bad and to torn a property owner out of his private property in preference to inapplicable federal statutes. 
she, th- these these people would not hear at this time. We, hopefully, they'll change their mind when they see. They finally start thinking about what we told them. We did offer some things. We'd offer some things, but I said, if, uh, I said, if you're going to go, out, if you're not going to do this, okay, that's off the table. That pre plea remedy's off the table. Okay, no, no collateral attack. That's off the table. Uh, how about this? No, that's not off the table. Okay, now you got me down to the jury. So before the jury, here, this is what you, you, you here's what we have for you. And we explained to her how her client could win after after she, he's now before a jury. If you can do it, present it correctly, and get an ignorant group of people to understand a very special law called the mining law that hardly anybody understands. We're not before a jury of your peers there. You're in front of, a, of a, an oppressive, ignorant commerce jury, not an, uh, a, a, a jury of your producers, peers. Uh, but we explain, and we've, and again, not my opinion. We have a court case that we uh, did this in, and we got the attorney to finally listen. She was a good attorney that way. She was actually the lawyer. She actually got in and inserted the law. And upon the assertion of the law, by the witness stand on the witness stand by the miner of his title to that property, showing the federal government has no property in these disposed lands, the jury saw his evidence. It's his location notice and agreed and was able to discuss the fact then that the government had no title to the property they were imposing federal law, criminal laws on. So we explained all that. That got her interest. I said, but if you're willing to do all that, why aren't you willing to do the attack before you enter the plea that says the very same thing but does it in law and doesn't re- doesn't need the jury to decide that? You don't have to educate the jury at all. The judge is now responsible to uphold the law. Why aren't you doing that up ahead? No. See, they want to keep this option over. So strictly all they want to do is keep the option that makes it look like they're protecting their client by throwing the client's uh, law and defenses under the bus in preference to the ability to maintain a plea. Do you hear anything different than the, new, the Nicholas Cruz issue? I'd like to hear what it is if you do. They said right in the reports now they just wanted to avoid the death penalty, the death row, that's it. They wanted to give him whatever else they could. They didn't want to entertain insanity defense based on uh, on some pharmaceutical, that's for sure. But they want to keep the plea deal open. And that's why he's all remorseful, see, because it, it also allows them to do that, keep him off death row. It doesn't keep a good, it wasn't a just defense, but it was, certainly makes the system good and protects the government's bottom line, don't you know? And so this is my correlation this week. Uh, notes in the news directly can be attributed to things that we're doing during the week that are directly explaining the condition. That if you don't understand this, you will do all the wrong things about it. And because we're literally in this war, and I can tell you, I'm not uh, criticizing the attorney at all. That's the game they learned to play. That's all they know. That she actually had... Uh, a very, in, uh, she thought it was nonsense what was going on. Thought it was kind of cri- that she did not agree with the cr- criminal justice system of being a place of justice. Neither the people that we talked to did. That didn't matter at some point uh, either. They saw how ridiculous it was, but again, the attorney wanted to throw everything underneath a prerogative of an agency, which the agency had no authority to do. I said, every word you're using is consistent with an agency position that the, that the miner hasn't been tested on, uh, tested for with his defenses underneath a BLM hearing first, not a criminal hearing. You've got to define that what he, you've got to find that the BLM shows that what he's doing is not mining. Not how much he's mining, that he's not mining. And I don't see or hear any evidence that that's in fact the case. In fact, you've said that you exactly see that he's mining. So so you want to talk about conditions and problems. You're wanting to make a negotiated plea without asserting before the before you have to plea. Uh, you want to make a plea deal instead of asserting before the plea that they haven't done everything that was needed to get him into court. If they can show that the court has jurisdiction over that state, uh, that state land, if you will. It's a state land in holding at that point, but not state land. It's that it, under state law. It's a state law in holding that the miner holds private. All these producers hold that way that's disposed of them. The Bundys hold the same way. The Hammonds hold the same way. How do you get terrorism charges uh, that, that are within? I said, how do you charge a man, in this case a man, for doing what Congress granted him to do as a crime? How do you charge a crime and how do you really expect him to answer to that? How can he answer to that? 
You ask him, the only question he has to get to the answer is, were you doing it? He says yes, he's condemned. How is that justice? Uh, so I've said all this just to show you, this is uh, what I see throughout all these cases, uh, the same. Uh, no one wants to listen to me. No attorney really wants to listen. And uh, Vince, for, those, for all the t effort you've had to try and tell the Bundys something, uh, that's your reason. I just I should point it out to you as I thought about it. And it's all you. Know, it's out in the real world, not not between me and Vince. The reason why the attorneys don't listen because it's outside the game plan of protecting the system, and it's a lot of work now because they've gone so far off the rail. But it doesn't mean it's invalid. And what you're watching is a is a contempt for the law, actually, contempt for actual defense. It's a an evidence for the status quo corruption. Uh, the corruption extends beyond, again, the closed system that it is. I'll move on here. Hero citizen stops mass shooting in church. At the same time, it's what's Parkland going on in Florida. This citizen steps into a church. There's a mass shooting was going to go on. And uh, he, they, he with a bunch of other people, uh, take uh, take this guy down that was going to round up 100 people in church. The guy who, uh, the, the, the church goer apparently, was uh, grabbed the gun from the guy and pulled it out of his hands the moment that the cops show up and they shoot this guy this the hero is the system it's the closed system that we live in uh, of why you should understand that you need something more to do than to allow that kind of nonsense hero citizen stops mass shooting in church cops show up and shoot him media silent is this continuing authorita that goes on and on and on that people are completely oblivious to. I hope I've delineated something you may, may hopefully I've done it something you hadn't really paid attention to about this uh, Florida shooting. Maybe as, as we can now expand it to how the, how the judicial system does what they do to y'all. It's a formidable foe. And if you don't have an idea that this is all working out this way, you have no way to combat it. And this is what comes at you after the fact you've done it all wrong, if you're not listening to me ahead of time, when the local bureau rat comes after you. But you go become a hero, and the cops will show up to, 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 uh, to, to take you out. That's an ongoing story. I won't show more. I'm just telling you, it doesn't matter what goes on. The government wins. The government is there to shoot you. The government is there to put you in their system and defeat you, and then and then take its get keep its message going counter to what you really need to know. In my view, not knowing about that the well, seeing the obstruction of an insanity defense, and really do believe that there's a those play a big part in that kid's uh, response to the world, and that becomes evidence of a problem, and that we can't get at it, and we can't show a greater pro a greater truth about these pharmaceuticals, notwithstanding their pro their data sheet. Uh, is the crime, and you're watching the government covered up. You're watching all the parties. In the, these are all government people covering this up right in front of you, and you complain about the fact you don't hear the, you don't hear about this these, this problem, or you conjecture about the potential cause, but you're not arguing that they've interfered, they've obstructed justice, and this is how they did it in order to cover that problem. And that then gives them license to go on and use other things, which divide us even more, like the gun issue. I was uh, really surprised. I kind of, I'm not really out of touch a lot of play. I look on Twitter. I found some people that were sending lots of streams of information from Parkland, so I jumped on those just to take, keep, keep keep tabs. I was able to see quite a few videos that were coming out that I wouldn't have seen, uh, just to see what what was this thing. And then right after the wave of anti-gun, the gun was the cause, and watching the reasoning which was no reasoning at all, has no reflection in law, has no reflection in reality. Uh, and I understand the feeling and, the, and, and I understand the, 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 you know, the shock and all that and wanting to, wanting to stop what you think is the problem. But there's a societal absence about the Second Amendment that is absolutely scary, stunning and scary that came out right after that. And I don't even care about the, you know, the the gun control. There's an internal ignorance in our society of many that can that these people that you're watching control this kid are they're telling you how they do it to you if you watch what they're doing to this kid. And I'll have to say it again. I'm not saying he wait, listen, I am saying it. He's presumed well, we can't now because he said. They're saying that he said, if you notice really carefully, they put in his, uh, that, that he confesses in quotes. They're saying that he said that he'd done it. Remember that trick, too. But he is presumed innocent. 
And so at that point, I want to see a, a justice. If he'd done it, he'd done it. If they can tie him to the high school, they can tie him to high school. I don't have more thought about it. But when you come in as a defense team, so-called, and you throw people under the bus, or when I was, I was talking to one not not a three foot from me, so dis trying to discuss a very serious problem for the mining community generally as well, that the, the, the government will not assert the law or the remedies of the law up front, but will work to save the status quo, I'm looking at a systemic problem that's universal. And it's no matter if it's on the West Coast or back over on the East Coast in Florida. It's the same, folks. And you better get a handle on it. Not that it's the corruption. It's how they're doing that. The underlying techniques they do to make it look like they're doing something. It's the color of authority that causes that felony when they're not actually doing this. If you can start putting this together, wherever you address this when you see it, you don't do it when it's not applicable. Everything in its place. But when you see this, you can go right at this and get it hit hard in a place they can't survive it. And we may over time, in a short time I think, instead of fighting amongst ourselves over the whatever, the guns, the color of this, whoever done it, whatever. We get past that nonsense that they want to inflame in us. We will start to get more to what we need to see. I don't want this kid going off. A tangent, but I would rather not, I don't want to see this kid getting hurt if he's been a victim of the government. Government was never supposed to play this part, and it is. That's our another, should be self-evident to us. So what do they do here? We discover, here we got, they'll sanction the pharmaceuticals. You let you kill other people. Uh, they'll kill you when you save other people. The bottom line is the government's a death machine. And, and how do they tell us? We've got, there's a little story came up, and we got a little side shoot, maybe a little bit lighter here. Maybe not so much what I'm what I what I observe, but it sure hit me strong when I was seeing it. A little story that all comes out. It doesn't matter what you do. Eventually, there's a gov there's a company or some government partnership that comes together that sh that ends up fulfilling the needs of the government to do its policies, however you think about them. Population control is one. Uh, the one that uh, there's a movie out talks about what they'll do with when there's too many of us. Here's a story that pops up this week. Boarding now for a flight from Tokyo to Paris uh, that never takes off was a story. A totally different story, but this, uh, this, this caused a thought in my mind. A fasten your seatbelt, a flight departing to Paris, and never leave the ground. That's exactly what a 12, passenger, uh, d uh, 12 passengers did at first airlines. In central Tokyo this week, and they where they relaxed in first and business class seats, where they served four course dinners before immersing themselves in a 360 degree virtual reality tour of the city's lights and sights. Quote: A real trip is a hassle to to prepare for, and expensive, and takes time. So I think it's good that we can enjoy all this hassle-free," says Takeshi Sakano, 39. 39, prime age here for this, folks. Who was on the first VR trip, adding that he wanted to travel, quote, travel, like the crews confessed, travel, in quotes, to Rome next time. At 6,600 yen, a fraction of the cost of an actual trip overseas, it's easy to see why first airs, two-hour flights, in quotes, to Paris, Rome, and Hawaii, and New York, have been fully booked since the company opened in 2016. Can I uh, remind you of the movie Soylent Green? Can I suggest this is the beginning. This is Theater 11. In the quote, we're hearing it. We have lots of elderly customers who want to go overseas but are not able to easily given their physical limitations. Sounded like Theater 11 to me in the Soylent Green movie. I don't know, folks. It just <laughs> slapped me right there. Okay, maybe I'm pushing it, but I don't think so. I don't think it's too far a stretch. You're seeing the beginning of the acclamation of this idea. You get to go travel somewhere at your final decision, and pretty soon they're going to have you all psyched up because of what they sanctioned, uh, the pharmaceuticals they sanctioned, the stuff they feed you in your box food. When you get too old and you can't feed for yourself, they start handing you the stuff, and pretty soon you're looking to do the society good. You're going to go to your, you're going to go to your theater 11, and they're going to have a VR trip for you. But remember, guarantee that it's 20 minutes. 
Guarantee you get your full 20 minutes, folks, at the age of 39. How are you going to pay for that, folks? Uh, 6,600 yen is about, a, I assume, I think it's about 61, 60 bucks or so, if I had the calculator quite right a few days ago. Uh, no chance, uh, we're going to, like, you pay with cryptocurrency, no chance of cryptocurrencies replacing, replacing fiat money, says J.P. Morgan. Why these stories come together, it just fascinates me. Maybe why I see them this way, I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe as much a fascination as possibly, I don't know. But no chance that you're going to use a cryptocurrency, apparently, to pay for that, uh, that trip to beyond, folks. <laughs> this stuff is just so funny. Are you getting it, folks? They're just setting you up everywhere, and you do it. You do it, and you allow it. So J.P. Morgan comes out and says no cryptocurrencies. Virtual coins fail to meet the major criteria. And I need to, I mean, at some point, they're, they're telling you something here as well that is what they know you should be doing, that you may or may not know you shouldn't, and they're going to promote it anyway and get it right past you. But here's the standard for what they actually know in the system about what a currency should be. A virtual currency failed to meet the major criteria of currency, according to, according to J.P. Morgan Chase, which has uh, called them bad, a bad store of value and a bad form of money. Take that to the bank, folks. But think about what does as they start speaking about what is an actually good so-called money, specie, not the currency they make, the specie. It may make sense for some investors to include digital currencies in their portfolios as a hedge, the bank said in a wide-ranging note to clients. The bank added, however, that it doesn't view any cryptocurrencies as, quote, a legitimate competitor to sovereign currencies. Wow, pretty big statements there. Okay, so go through and read. You get the link on this or find this and read it, what they understand the uh, currency ought to be, and realize the fiat they hand you doesn't even meet this. I've told you they're going to blend it at some point. He's denying it. Uh, this is a, the guy, one of the, isn't this the guy that came out and uh, said that the uh, Bitcoin was a fraud as well, was a diamond or something, where they said that? That's all talk. And you know why I know that's all talk? Because they've told us before it's going to be all talk when they're going to integrate all this. And here we have it, in the same week that, they, that J.P. Morgan comes out and says it can't be a legitimate competitor, Litecoin skyrockets thanks to deal with Visa. There, there's, your, there's your connection about the problems, and they're going to fix it, folks. They're going to bring you into this condition and system. If it was neutral, I could care less. It would be great, but it's not. It's been doing it for a reason. Litecoin, one of the most popular co uh, cryptocurrencies on the market, gained 36% overnight, making it the fifth most capitalized cryptocurrency in the world. Well, I thought there was no value of J.P. Morgan, but here we go. Same week, J.P. Morgan says, ah, poo-poo that. We're going we're gonna to have Visa come along, and we're going to go ahead and capitalize that thing, and we're going to start using it. Do I need to really read more? Uh, it's, they're already feeding into this uh, unsubstantial condition. Uh, while J.P. Morgan is telling you don't don't do it unless unless it's just a little bit of a hedge. How can it really be a hedge if it's if it's volatile? So there's a lot of mixed signals, but the main thing is don't do don't listen to what they say, folks. What does what does the Libra code tell me if I didn't know more? If I didn't hear it anywhere else, you know them when you see them. You know them by their deed, indeed. And so while J.P. Morgan's yakking and talking. Litecoin is joining up with Visa, or the other way around, I should say, and this is going to legitimize this thing. And at some point, I think it, that's fine, but that's not its real purpose either. Uh, fourth, and then you find out, so now the government's in, I remember Visa and co corporations and stuff, they're all in on the backside of this. And they're all in it for the bottom line, folks, is the whole point, and they're going to do it by exploiting you in whatever way they can. If that's a VR trip to Rome or your VR trip to the bank, it don't matter. They're going to get their cut from you, willingly. And then we read this, the more than 4,000 government websites infected with covert cryptocurrency miner. The rise of cryptocurrency mining software like CoinHive has been a decidedly double-edged sword. Well, there's lots of those this uh, last few weeks I've been talking about, and they pop up everywhere now, folks. I must... I must be a, one of the, the 
leaders of the vocabulary, I suppose. Here it is. It's a double-edged sword. Well, I say grab the handle, if you can, or get away from it. Well, uh, many websites have begun exploring cryptocurrency mining as a way to generate some additional revenue. Several have run into problems if they fail to warn visitors that their CPU cycles are being co-opted in such a fashion. Uh, that has resulted in numerous websites like Pirate Bay being forced to back away from the software after the poor implementation and zero transparency resulted uh, resulted in the fr uh, frustrated users who say that the software gobbled up 85% of their available CPU processing power without their knowledge or consent. And I say that was wrong. It was an absolute transparency. Nobody saw it, and that's what they got ticked off about it. They couldn't see that that's what was being caused, and that's what they didn't consent to. So these uh, people don't understand what the word transparency actually means. Uh, but here it is. It's a, I think I got under one the other day. I, I got under the site, and all of a sudden my CPUs went way the heck up, and it took a little while to get disconnected from that website. But, oh, and that was on a browser. I don't have a, uh, there's a little program you can get. I think it's called NoCoin. Make sure you get the right one. It'll, uh, it says it, and I haven't had it on the other browsers. It, it says it'll block the attachment of those, those things, uh, from the websites. Is it called, I think it's called NoCoin. It's a thing, it's uh, a plugin for your browser. The one browser I have that isn't accessible to the, to the plugin, I think I would have, may have went to a website that had one of these things, and boy, they really do start sucking up the power, and it makes it hard for you to do anything else, which may be a good thing, because then you start finding out uh, that it's there. But here's the point. Uh, government websites are being infected. They can't even dis And I say I wonder whether or not they're being infected unknowingly or, or willingly, because as we see Venezuelan, Venezuela will, will steal all your equipment and start up their own farms. It, you know, again, this is going to be... Uh, rem this is how they're going to expand the economy, so-called. See, it's not going to—it's not going to be made to interrupt. Everyone, all the libertines want to expose. We're going to interfere with the currency market, you know, money generation. No, 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 no. This is a way for them to unlawfully expand the currency and make it look like everybody's rich. And in fact, you're di di you're diluting the entire and diluting the the entire population. Uh, but here's the uh, uh, 4,000 government websites are infected by government covert crypto mining. So there's uh, interesting things going on. The governments are involved. Uh, they let it or don't, or they allow it. The point is that these, these digital currencies, these virtual reality, is this trip to Rome uh, is, is, is yours to plug into and accept. And do it by the time you're 39. In fact, as I just said that, remember I told you you were elderly at 46. I told you that was in a story years and years ago. They talked about the elderly woman who was 46 years old. I said, well, there's your there's your definition of elderly. And I think it was either on Freaker's Ball or maybe it was on, uh, and I don't remember, maybe it was on um, uh, Grammy Mary or uh, Grammy Mary Show or, or uh, Dork Table on Saturday. They said that they did come up with the idea that uh, the elderly are at 39. Or maybe 36. So don't think this is a joke. It's a joke until you're that age and you have to make that decision. Uh, understand, you heard it here behind the woodshed. If no one wants to connect it together, I'm telling you it's there to connect together. And you better take it serious for as lunatic as it sounds. Lunatic is another parasite. So be careful. And the lunatic may have been pharmaceutically induced in you. And it's going to be in your food box here soon as well. Congress introduces new set of bills to limit the right to seek justice against major corporations. I don't know what to tell you. It makes sense to me since that's what they're protecting. Everywhere is their bottom line. So, again, it's evidence in that the Congress don't care about you. There's no, no executive power, no judicial power going to be protecting you. Congress introduced a new set of rules to limit the right to seek justice against major corporations. The court system uh, provides a way for citizens to ensure that their rights are upheld when a corporate interest or private or profit engage in exploitive and destructive activities. Is that true, folks? That opening statement is completely wrong versus and when you go into Title 50. But anyway, that's the delusion, right? Uh, it's, it's a way to, to level the playing field and ensure that they hel are held accountable uh, that everyone's rights remain intact is a myth. But that's what we believe because we're a deluded population. And anybody who actually rolls up their sleeve and starts to get involved, and when you start to be able to d advance in that terrain, will then be helpful. Otherwise, you're just everyone's just going to whine about it. However, the new political atmosphere, see, they think it's a new political atmosphere. 
But here's the new political atmosphere currently in play in legislative circles. Many major corporations are circling Congress like a bunch of vultures, like every other lobbyist looking to make a profit to you, getting a special law to exploit against you. Congress has countenanced a large number of bills over the course of the past year that deal with the deregulation, deregulating, I'll get that right, industry, either by removing regulations entirely or else knocking out their teeth. Now, we go through that. Some of that deregulation has to happen. Some of this is, is federal overreach. Remember, it's all going to be in commerce, so there's not much... Uh, not much of an argument beyond that that it says that they can go and do this. And this is, again, about the bottom line. As a, a bill that, uh, which passed last fall repealed the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's regulation that prevents banks, lenders, and other corporations from driving aggrieved consumers into an arbitration process and effectively prevents federal-level class action lawsuits in, against banks, predatory lenders, and, uh, and others. So, again, inside job. Uh, you don't need to go for it. You keep plugging in. That's what you're plugging in, too. You write a phone contract, you go to the arbitration, and you go to these private uh, bar-driven systems as well. I can go on and read all this stuff. You need to read it for yourself. If you're not interested, I'm wasting your time both times. Uh, I just want to point out that Congress sits there to tell you that it's going to provide no protection to you. It's not going to allow, uh, really, the, the, the level playing field. And as I read that article, I'm seeing other things that you can do. So uh, it, it depends. On, I don't want to get into it. Because if you're not willing to walk with me a bit down the path, you want to fight with me or just to think it's not pertaining to you, I'm wasting your time twice. And what I say won't matter anyway. And so part of me has to sit back and wait for those to come uh, come to the point where uh, they have to ask a question. And then I'll, I'm here with an answer for those of us uh, that are doing this and or the subject matter that I think I find is within my within my uh, my skill set. Uh, so Congress is part of the problem. Uh, we uh, we uh, we understand the government doesn't like competition. And when this little report pops out, all this stuff comes out together just to let us know. Uh, it's really, in a way, it's funny. I mean, if uh, if, if it wasn't killing people, I'd, I guess it'd be the, really hilarious. Um, but but understand how this works uh, throughout the world. Uh, the, and this has been a study now that was done that the world's worst money launderers are the U.K., Switzerland, and the United States. Well, was that a surprise, folks? But uh, here we are. U.K., Switzerland, Switzerland, United States are the worst money launderers. Okay, so we can say that. Uh, do you know how to prove it? Well, it just so happens behind the woodshed we've been working on how to, how to expose that. And uh, I can't go more into it than to tell you uh, we do have a, a, a statutory rule set, a, a matter of law perfection again in an equity jurisdiction uh, that we proved that these court systems and statement uh, in how we showed the evidence of how they run their money through your court system, and it's not in the uh, it's not in the um, uh, what, there's that system that the corporate system of of, of pooling the, the the tickets. I didn't go. We didn't need to go that direction. Uh, we strictly did it out of the act of their acts, contrary to law. We pointed out they have no duty inside it to show that the courts are money laundering systems. A lawsuit went in a few weeks ago. It's going on, uh, maybe just going on to four weeks now. It's in default, folks. People don't answer. This is people that, these are state officials that are protected by the state who won't answer, folks. This is how, what I'm telling you about when you start getting on point. And so we're still not finalized on that. That's still ongoing within the rules of due process that you'll find federal rules of civil procedure tell you all about it. I don't make any of that stuff up. We just go through what the rules say. We just qualify the rule and move it on through. Uh, we'll move it on through because the rule is a matter of law, fact of what happens, and they're binding. Why would I want to do anything else? We now have, I can tell you, this is not this chart is correct. The world's worst money launderers are the U.K., Switzerland, the United States. The whole and the entirety of the court system is a big money laundering condition. It's a big human trafficking system. I've told you this years, weeks and weeks and weeks, months, years ago. This is not opinion, folks. You might think it is. Maybe I don't back it up quite so much like you want to hear, but I want you to go find that fact of it out. Those of you that have been involved in the system should have been the first to be able to call it out. Why haven't you? Instead of arguing with me. You know it's there. You, listen, I, this, I watch people here and there for occasionally. I'm astounded at what you know. And yet you never put it into practice quite right. I'm astounded, and, I, and I'm disappointed all at the same time. Wow, if you could just put that together, 
you'd you'd have something there, not just a, you you're attacking me or you uh, not just giving your hand throwing your hands up. And as I say that, it was a thought a long time through back. I noticed I went in on a website chat, and I noticed a comment that said that I lost somebody. I can't remember now who it was. I'm sorry. I, in, my, in the way I talk or the way I presented something, I'd lost the, somehow I've lost the subject matter, the point. If, and I'm not asking for the feedback unless you need to, but if I ever do that, I need really to hear back on the point that I lost you on. And I need to be able to analyze whether or not I kind of went astray myself and didn't get back or whether I didn't make a point better that I need to start doing that for you all that you don't lose the point. I'm not here just to make noise. I'm here to try and uh, get you to understand principles that are workable, not not lose, not to sound like I'm, oh, I'm so, I've uh, got so many things going on that I just confuse everybody. That's not what I'm here for. And so I was um, interested to see it. And I thank you for that that internal comment to the chat. Uh, but it, it uh, and I'm glad I went through. I happened to just offhandedly went in. I was one looking for um, somebody, and I wanted to. Just, I forgot to mention this uh, uh, then. If I'm saying stuff that gets you uh, lost, if you can identify where I, I what I started to say and where I got you lost, I need to uh, look at that so I can tie my communication better together for you. Maybe I need to not segue quite too so much. I, I tend to do that a little bit, but I want to show. I do that because I want to show you there's so many things that are going coming to play. Not only is it so much to catch your attention and get you off point, but those all could be avenues of attack when you go in to stop that thing. All the things at play are all the subject matter areas of in, of, of of points and data points you have to you have to in, include in your interpretation of any strategy or tactic you develop. And so I kind of do it that way. I, I haven't said that before to clarify it. But anybody that, I, that I've been talking, and if you wish to send me a mark on the beast at yahoo.com, an email mark on the beast yahoo.com. Don't have to get wordy. Don't have to just say oh, you were talking about this. I lost you right here. And I can maybe see about working that out uh, with any of you uh, on that. And so uh, if not, uh, we, I keep going the way I'm going because I have no feedback necessarily on it. Uh, and I do thank all the people that put in comments in the like the YouTube and stuff. But telling me that uh, solid solid broadcasts and all that's great. Uh, I just want to make sure that you you hear it and 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 start to actually apply this. Is really my mo my main focus is you need to know it good enough to start actually putting it in practice. It, whether that's in discussing more peacefully amongst people that are divided and bringing people together to understand better that we have a bigger an enemy, or whether you stride it out and actually actually take on a responsibility on your own because there's not many that will. Uh, that's the other other problem. A uh, former CIA chief admits U.S. meddling in foreign elections, quote, for their own good, should tell you everything you need to know about the United States government. Now I read it again. Former CIA chief admits U.S. meddling in foreign elections for their own good. Uh, Twitter came out and says, a guy named Bill Mitchell, uh, just speaking broadly here, doesn't the U.S. interfere in the elections of other nations pretty much constantly? Don't we have entire agencies dedicated to spying, disrupting, infiltrating, etc.? And my response to that is, just other nations? You think that this guy's coming up to say, oh, we do it to them before their own good, like we have a, something to say about their lives, but you don't think they're turning it around on you? Certainly you know. The choir sings here. You know that they are. The point is, you have to watch and see, what are they doing? They're pointing out like they have the right, first of all, to do something they don't. That's the authority. That's a crime against another people. And they're willing to do it out there. I keep telling you, if they're willing to do it to someone else, they're willing to do it to you. You're just a human resource, and their interest is the bottom line. They just told you. Congress just said it. The, the, uh, the legislative branch of that government told you that they are more willing to give protections to their monetary system and their corporations that support the bottom line than they are to you. People don't recognize that that's what's going on, or then they just say, "Yeah, okay, we have no, we have no justice." You're not going to get this back by complaining. And if you think you are, uh, you are living in La La Land. So, just other nations, they're going to get uh, uh, do something for their own good. Do you think that box of food is going to be for your own good? I don't know why that became a focus, but it sure is. A, it's just a violation. It's just a dis, it's a, man, a big dismissal, big disrespect. 
And then from my perspective, you don't even need to go there if you're actually doing stuff that the law says you ought to do to bring the lands of the, of the, of the, the people's lands into production. And improving production, it says in the law. Not just, the, oh, just a little bit of hedge trimming here and hedge trimming there, calling it logging. No. There's a way to manage the lands that's much healthier uh, than, than uh, we uh, allow because of the so-called protecting the environment. That's a fraud. And, and when you go and produce a, Mother Nature gives you all this and you tend to what she offers the best in improving, everybody starts to benefit better that gets in touch with it. And lots and lots of people, it's the foundation of your society. They won't go there, but they'll go after trying to poison you, give you box food, whatever the heck it is, give you box pharmaceuticals, sanction this, sanction that, uh, uh, Im impose uh, restrictions on your ability to get justice. You have to orient your mind into a different place, and then you're going to have to sit back and say, how am I existing in this place? How do I continue to allow it? Where, and I would hope you would come up and say, where, how, where am I, where am I? That's where I want to get involved. I'll, that's where I'm going to drop in. We're going to fix that right here. Best I can. So what happens when the government does what the, the kind of attitudes is? We do it for their own good? What arrogance. What hubert. What nonsense. What criminal behavior this is. Psychopathy to the highest. Cockistocracy. How many more words are we going to bring up? Well, what happens when you start doing the world that way? Russia is taking over Syria's oil and gas. That's what happens. The better player uh, ends up getting the advantage. And if you don't think that's a big deal in the news, uh, what the Congress and the, mis the, the, the lack of real diplomacy in the world, uh, the, the failure of this war idea that you go around beating on people because it's for their own good, where did these people get grown up that they didn't get taken behind the woodshed and said, you don't do that to people? Before they got into the places of power to make the decision, Russia is taking over Syria's oil. There's a big, a big agreement that just came down. Uh, there is going to be some problems for Russia. They got to do some new infrastructure, a lot of investment, but they're doing it. Uh, so we, the United States, if it was uh, attempting to try and be the good guy and and bring, uh, well, they tried to bring rule of law and democracy, didn't they? And how what that get them? It didn't get them those uh, the oil contract and gas contract. You think Russia actually needs the oil and gas? Or do you need, think it needs to be working with people in order to bring its stuff up and back uh, through these countries as well? Uh, wor working with countries uh, to mutual benefit, whatever they have decided for themselves. Does this attitude, uh, we're going to do stuff that for your own good work, or does Russia work? And so, whatever we think about Russia or not, and, and whatever we think about uh, how in incapacitated they are, they won that point. And now, whether or not the United States is not going to attack that or whatever, however, get scam, I don't know. The point is, you don't walk around the world and say, we know what's good for you, so here. Just like the blue box. Just like your pharmaceuticals. Just like your legal system. And we were supposed to be set, setting up and vigilant enough to stop any indiscretion by it, and we haven't. I guess that may be my main and only point. We, we, we have lost it. That's the cricket thing. We weren't supposed to be contented and, and feeling so nice that we, we, we scrape our little legs and make pre pleasant noise. Because we're under attack. There's a war against us. How can you possibly feel that? That you can sit content with this war against all of us. And it comes out and eventuates itself in the most obvious, like the killing at the school. I'm not claiming I know the cause. I'm saying that we're uh, there's a system that looks like it's blocking the investigation of a cause that may be the real causation, which would put a whole new reflection on well, how we would address all these things. And that kid, that kid gets to go to a place for the rest of his life to be abused by the worst of everybody. Instead of being put in a place that might give him help, because guess what they have to do? All they have to do is start feeding him really good, and they have to give him a little bit of attention because of a deprivation on the social side, but they get to stop giving him pharmaceuticals. That was my question. How do you go to a sanctioned institution that will give you pharmaceuticals as a treatment to stop the problem that you caused you to be the victim? Where do you go and actually to get the, to stop the cruel and unusual punishment inflicted upon you by the government in that system? We know better for you, and you lose you lose the wealth here. And there's the evidence of it in the, in the international specter uh, about uh, about that uh, whole point. Russia's been making friends. They've been trying to do their thing, and they're and they're, they're successful at it. Whatever my opinion, one way or the other is, they are becoming successful at it. You watch what starts to happen there 
to, to interfere with that. You're going to, well, this is not good for you. We are going to stop that. What's good for you is we make the Kurds an autonomous state. They don't. They really don't care. That's not really the purpose. They're going to bring real rule of law and democracy. That's the bar association under mob mob chaos, mob rule. That's all that they're putting everywhere. Why? Because a, a, a divided people is conquered. We've told that forever, forever, folks. And why do you continue being divided amongst yourselves in the chats against me, wherever, against anybody? Gun control, this and that's not even the point. Get off of it. Stop it. How, how would you like to be treated like that would be your defense team and throw you throw you under the bus? And maybe you aren't under drugs so that you get to see the full real horror without the, the numbing the numbing qualities of a, of a pharmaceutical. Figure that one out. So moving into the problem of keeping track of all, all the victims and uh, us plugging in and the currency systems and the virtual reality and our virtual reality that we choose to the, to the, take the trip and don't leave the farm, folks. And we're not talking cannabis because they've outlined that because it probably works for those that you need it. See how that works? Take a trip and don't leave the farm was not about taking cannabis. It was about going to the little room with the VR glasses and watching the nice pretty pictures for 20 minutes. Your Theater 11. How do they do all that? Well, they're, they're, the virtual reality comes to you and you adopt it. And here has been the first test of doing that. Someone said that, uh, that they actually wanted to investigate that, a journalist. The house that spied on me, very interesting story, uh, that took an apartment. Uh, her and her husband take an apartment. They took everything they possibly can. She bought all the stuff that tied her into the Internet of Things. Everything. Even the personal sex toy had this uh, connection. The bed. The, the Everything. Well, well, what, here's, the, the, here's the bottom line of it. First of all, it sounds like a good idea like anything. Then she has a guy who's working with her who's a tech dude who's able to inter intercept all the signals coming out except the encrypted stuff. So just looking at the stuff that's coming from these machines, even when she was not home, he could start to develop how she lives her life, what she did, who, how her husband, uh, where, the, how long they went and laid in the bed, when they brushed their teeth, uh, when, uh, the, uh, the, when the coffee pot got turned on, all that stuff, just like your smart meter would do if you don't have all the Internet of Things, but through different signatures. What she found out was that those machines end up ruling her life because they don't talk to each other so well. They have firmware problems. They don't have certain signals that they need to do it. They, they don't really serve you. They serve you up to those that are looking in and you've given up all your rights of this privacy into this system that she could not... Uh, at the end, she was done with it, folks. And this is what I'm saying. Look ahead of this technology. This, techno this is the techno technocrat's uh, dream of having all this done, and you're doing it to yourself. We allow the sanction of government to rule our lives, and we go all the way to from the point of killing each other, being thrown under the bus for it, to being uh, utilized as a long-distance uh, beast of burden, uh, extracting from you all the stuff that they would do as a human resource, and they get you to plug it in, and they keep monitor on that, so they know exactly what to send you. And uh, at some point, you're going to go to your last trip and not leave the farm. You won't even have to tell them what color the room should be. You won't even have to tell them what pretty pictures you want. They'll know all about it. You're just going to walk into a room thinking, like, oh, you're going to get a pizza or something. Maybe get your next Blue Apron box. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said uh, fired you up or astonished you enough to get, wow, we need something to do here, because I hope that's what we can do. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do. And thank you, everybody who donates to the reallibertymedia.com to keep it going. Uh, this is the only time we do this a year, once a year. Uh, Jules at ucy.tv, thank you very much for what all you do. Same thing over there. Donate to keep these things going. And all y'all that are supporting and promoting and, um, and, and helping the broadcast to get the word out, absolutely thank you very much for all that you do there. I'll be here next week. Tech this for Nature Willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
first opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>